In, in cities, we have to find creative ways to create more space. And there's obviously one resource that it hasn't been taken on enough, and that's the rooftops. So there is a number saying there is space for 55,000 new flats on Berlin's rooftops. And there they're talking about flats with 75 square meters. So there is the space and there is enough resource to really do that. So what you have to do is do it. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi. I wasn't really watching the... <laughs> it's great, the right? Where, where to start? Yeah, I mean, because the idea is to go up, right? I mean... Yeah, it is, absolutely. The idea is to bring th these minimal houses on rooftops like this and uh, the fun part is actually we always need a crane like this to place the cabin somewhere and the crane doesn't care about if it's on the ground or seven stories high. In transporting a cabin you have to make your mind up how you, how you place it, how big it can really be and where you access the, the, the anchor points for the crane. It's there up here and then basically here and then in the back. You have the points and then you can hang it. That's how it works. So you're saying you have to use a crane anyway to move a prefab? Yeah. Why not go bigger? Right, right. It doesn't matter if, it, if the crane picks it up like five meters just to put it over the fence or all the way up. It's, you need the same crane and it's, it's, it's more or less the same game. The point is more like the structure underneath, like to prepare the rooftop and check all the regulatories and all that stuff. That's part of the regular building process. That's more the point about it. But then really placing the existing unit up there is not the game. And the resource is there and it's underused and we can just place these cabins very quickly up there without long planning phase or long, long construction phases or something. Imagine it on a rooftop. The facade here coming towards you because it's a gesture of, of strength, basically. And it's, it, it, it's a difference if you go, if you lean back and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I hesitate, right? Um, or if you just lean forward a little bit. So that, that just says, okay, I'm here and, and shows it's, it's a proper house. It's not just something that leans back and says, uh -huh, I'm here, but it's like, yes, look at me. I'm here, I'm beautiful. The, the whole product is easy to control. If you come in here for the first time, you exactly know what's happening. You come in to the, through the door and you already can look outside again already. You have all this context of outside in. So you have all this, this added room basically. So that's why we have these big windows and everything was designed to feel as, as, as cozy as possible. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a home feeling. A lot of um, wood, as you can see. I love the smell. It's very cabiny, especially for a rooftop. You could have done a sleek sort of urban look. <laughs> yeah, sure, but we actually decided to go exactly the other way around. It's, it's the idea of building oasis in the city, because that's what people need. A place to breathe, to feel home, feel cozy. This space here, where the, the main window is, the main direction window is, is so prominent that you want to just really consume it. You want to sit here, you want to sit in, like outside, basically. What I often do is hang out here and I have my laptop and then you, you have a look out there. And if you just imagine that you're like on a rooftop, you just want to escape the city all the way upwards, right? You have this massive view and you are in here, feel cozy and, and have a little bit of a connection to calmness. I have been on so many rooftops now in Berlin. Every single one has a great view in one direction. So it doesn't matter. It's just that feeling of being up there, having horizon. I mean, even here on that parking lot, it's great to sit here and just have a look out there and see what's happening. The construction is running, people are coming by, taking pictures of the cabin and so on. It's just, it's just this, this getting the outside in 
and having the feeling of, of somehow communicating with the space around you. Um, that, that makes it really nice. And so we, we said, okay, this, this bench needs to be here to just, just relax. And then we couldn't really decide if you want to sleep here or up there. You can unfold it. And so you get out the drawers and then you just uh, unfold that. Big. It is big. I'm six to eight or something like that. Six three almost. Mm -hmm. We have to find some sort of a mattress thing, but you can even sleep in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. We always designed for calmness in the view, so everything needs to be calm for your eyes. So and if you have a lot of nitty gritty things and features and everything, it's hard actually, you'd play with it, but it still needs to be as quiet as possible. Because if you enter a room, your brain wants to control the room to feel comfy. It's hard to, to do that, to bring everything in that small room and still have a, some sort of a clear line. We decided for steps rather than a ladder, because we said you need to go up the bed with two things in your hand, the espresso and the laptop or whatever, and then you have to walk up here should be possible without holding something. And at the same time, it's obvious that you can use it for, for storage, yeah. Everything is just like on every centimeter, you, you have to decide how narrow, how wide it can be. This is not wide enough for a commercial use. In projects that we do with hotels, we are changing that. But for home like use, that. you can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to declare this as a bedroom, you have to say this is a storage space or something. You can't it, 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 legally it, call it a bedroom. I guess. It's actually my favorite spot up here. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah. Is it's like sitting here um, or back there in the in the corners. That's that's just the most relaxing. It's also really open for a bedroom. So, so it was, was rather the decision to not have a bedroom. And I, I think one thing that's important in, in the small rooms is that you can feel the whole room from every bot. That was the decision to have the bed up here. And then the question was how to compensate. And then of, co of course with the, with the window up here, sleeping under the stars, having the, the view. Yeah, so we try to always find the trade-off to make that small footprint as big as possible. <laughs> so fully furnished kitchen, kitchenette, it's, it's small. But we were keen to, to build in everything in proper size. So no small because the house is small. No, it's a big stove because the house is small, right? Um, and then you go with the fridge, um, just, just regular. You have the dishwasher here, um, full size, and then room for garbage. So bathroom, just the skylight though. So. We had the feeling that you need some sort of a feature that makes it even bigger. When you shower here and it's, it's, it's bright outside and you get the feeling for the daytime, it's a prefab bath module. So everything here is just, it's just sealed as it is and could actually <laughs> take a hose and clean the whole thing out. Um, yeah, here, this is a smart mirror, something a friend of mine came up with. It's basically a, a mirror which just works in one direction and on the other side we build a screen and a computer. It, it has a camera here and the idea is to have to, to work with a gesture um, control. It's like a dashboard. You come in, the house tells you what it's up to. <laughs> turn on the heating, turn it off, just turn on the lights, turn on the music, transportation times, uh, weather data, time of the day, some news. It can be a powerful mm -hmm. tool if you decide for that. Yeah, huge window, especially in summers. This is how you want it. Then you have to imagine the terrace out here, just one step. And then you again, you have the inside out and the outside in. So it's, it makes it a lot more fluent between everything that's out there and in there. Anything like for support underneath? What's foundation like? If you have it in the countryside, you will you do proper foundation on, on points, but on a rooftop you just have to find a way to, to get the loads in the right directions and make sure it's, it's leveled. The building is heavy enough, it probably... Yeah, it's 13.5 tons.
Yeah, so when the crane, the crane lifts up the house at, at eight points, so that's in the front where, the, where the, the other metal beam is, then here and there, and then where this wall is and then where the back wall is. So that's where the crane takes it. And to prevent the house from going like collapsing, these metal beams are there to, to give it the stability that's needed to lift it up. You don't need it to have it standing here, it's just for having it lift up. Big windows, very important to us. I never had the feeling that there's not enough space in here. When we iterate the product more, we probably build even a little bit smaller because I, I, we have plenty of room here. We had a party with 20 people, but no problem. Nobody said, oh, there's not enough, not enough room. You just choose the window and then you, you go open the window. What do you think hotels did evolve in such a way that just created experiences and then housing is not yet there? I think it's now coming since these two markets like hotel and conventional housing are moving more towards together and in between there is a new market evolving I, I believe. And in that space we see housing products more attached to a new sort of experience in housing. Especially since the lifestyles are getting more and more flexible and you're probably not looking for this I stay here for the next 30 years housing thing. 